Hello and welcome to the next video in the Antenna University. If you have been watching for a little while, you'll know that we've done a couple of videos already. This isn't my normal environment. You'll have already spotted that I'm not sat in my regular room. And this is because this is part of the Menace RC headquarters. Now this is being filmed with the kind support of Menace RC. So I need to say a very big thank you to Greg, who's helping with the series because he has all of the top end equipment. Some of it is quite old, so those of you that have an engineering background will kind of recognize some of the bigger pieces of equipment, and some of it is very, very new and expensive indeed. Much better than the things that I have access to as an enthusiastic amateur. So what today's video is all about is about testing something that Greg saw at a race meeting last year. And what we'll do is I'll kind of play a video as Greg's talking to actually show you what's going on. And what it's all about is that occasionally you will find that phantom FPV channels will appear. So if you and your mate are flying and you're flying together, you might find that you are picking up a third kind of combined signal that potentially could be outputting at the same frequency that someone else is trying to use for their FPV experience as well. And you can step and stomp all over their experience. So in this video, I'm going to hand over to Greg just to talk a little bit about how he discovered this. And while he's talking, I'll give you a practical demo of what you can see if you're running two FPV channels at once. Sometimes you can get a phantom one actually mm. appearing as well. So Greg, thank you very much for the time. Do you want to just explain how you, because when you first explained this to me, it sounded like black magic. And we've <laughs> just done the test yeah. um, and I've seen it myself. So I'm not sure that this is something that lots of people are even aware of. So can you talk a little bit about the background of how you found this out? Because this is something you and Ian covered about nine, ten months ago, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, we, we uncovered it um, quite recently and I wasn't aware of it. Um, I was aware of having problems when flying with friends. Um, but yeah, this basically what it was, um, a few weeks ago, I was with Andrew Hyams from LDO and we were down at Popham. And whilst we're at Popham, we were doing some testing to find the perfect pilot position for the FPV course that they've got down there. So this was FPV racing, five inch racing quads, standard stuff. Everyone's going to be using race band, one, two, three, four, five, whatever. Yeah. And where, where the best place for everyone to stand and sit is. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Because, um, and Andrew gets involved with, uh, the mini air show, which they hold at Popham. And then they have like a, a team race. And a part of that team race is that you've got teams. Each team has two frequencies. So they wanted to use all eight, eight race bands. So we went down with a load of VTXs and a load of guys were flying as well. So what we were trying to do is find the worst scenarios of um, frequencies flying and then find the best location for the pilots. Um, whilst doing this, um, we were experiencing uh, interference. So on other channels where we didn't even have VTXs on. And it was quite, um, it, it was quite uh, an overpowering weird signal and it was affecting people so the the discovery with it you know when, when we were down there it sort of led us on to think well we need to look into this a bit further so after we'd finished that day we'd obviously found the the, the best position for the pilot so the job done there but um me and andrew carried on discussing online about these mystery frequencies that are appearing Andrew sent me over some information um, about IMD, which is intermodulation distortion. And effectively what this is, is where you have um, two frequencies in your receiver, because your, your antenna and everything on your receiver will receive all the frequencies but it will receive the, the, the two and then within your receiver in your goggles or your screen or whatever it is, um, you will get these IMD frequencies and they can be very, fairly straightforward to calculate what these are. But what we found was that if you put on say race band to a couple of race bands, there was this other one appearing at one of the other race bands. So when you go to put your um, VTX on on that race band, we were experiencing interference and problems. 
So the test that you've just shown me and we've just kind of reproduced here. So what we mm. did, first of all, we plugged in Raceband 1 yeah. and uh, fire up the little screen and you can see we put a little uh, number in front of it so we can see which is which, which is helpful, hopefully for those of you watching. Um, and that all works tickety boo. And you can see on the uh, RF analyzer that frequency burst into life. Then we put another transmitter on, on Raceband 3. Mm -hmm. But interestingly, as well as being able to tune to that race band three and again see it, and again you can see three in the little screen as you can see in this video, there's also, if we look at the analyzer, you can see that there's also a third peak. Now that third peak seems to coincide exactly with race band five. So if you tune the screen to race band five, you can actually see a combination of both of the images, both a, a reasonably clear image of number three. Race band mm -hmm. three, but also race band one, kind of, kind of moving over the edge. And then what you did was plugged in a, a, a transmitter actually set to race band five. And as you moved it towards the receiver, it worked great. And then as you moved it far away from the receiving antenna, you had the phantom signal overpowering the actual real antenna that was on race band five. So say for example, the three of the field, I'm on race band one, you're on race band three. Andrew or somebody else on race band five, when me and you started out and fired everything up, Andrew might be okay with his quad by his feet when he fired up race band five, he can see everything fine. But as soon as he got the other side of the field where our two quads were our side of the field, his signal would be over, uh, uh, would be swamped, I guess, by this phantom signal that you and I are accidentally creating. Is that what you were seeing at Popham? Yeah, it was something, um, something basically along those lines. Um, it, exactly that. And it, you know, the, the level of interference depends entirely where the drones are on the course and, you know, who is at the other end of the course, who is at this end of the course. So, like you were just saying, if one in three at this end and five is at the other end, then the guy receiving five, he's going to have a lot more interference than what he's normally used to. Um, so yeah, this this is the the, the phenomenon that, that's happening. Well, hang on a minute. I thought race band. The whole point of race band was it was the the maximum separation between each of these frequencies available for eight pilots, assuming that all the frequencies are available where you are. Mm. Um, that the maximum you can have was eight pilots, and it gave you the best separation. It was the best way to get multiple pilots into the air. It sounds like that's not. So is is there a better way? Is there a better way to do it? Well, um, I think the race bands, um, I think when they were created, was purely to have um, a maximum separation. And it's actually an equal separation between each of the bands, which is where the, the problem comes in. Because you can you can um, work out the, the, the IMD band um, with a very quick calculation of the other two bands that are on. So it's basically you take your first frequency, double it, and take away your second frequency, and you end up with your third frequency. This phantom or intermodulation distortion. Yeah, the frequency. IMD. So, so it's actually pretty easy to figure out. Yes, yeah, oh, absolutely. Basically, uh, Andrew sent over a link um, to a website called ET, ET Heli, and it's by a guy called Eric Thomas. And on there, he's um, he's got these calculations in a, in a very nice tool that you can use. Um, and I'll put a link down below. So if you're interested in having a look at this site, because it's interesting that um, Greg was figuring this out and also other people have already spotted it. It doesn't seem to be very widely known. So check down below the video and I'll put the links for everything we're talking about there. So, yeah, um, it, he, he's got a great um, tool on there. So you can pop your frequencies in that you want to use and then it will work out um, the separation, the, the, the fundamental separation of the frequencies, but also it'll work out the IMD frequencies and see how far away they are from the fundamental frequencies you want to use. So after going through a few iterations and things, there is a set of frequencies that you can use um, with our current equipment and it will avoid these IMD frequencies. So if you're flying with friends, you can get even clearer, clearer signal than using just race band. Fantastic. So so what's the recommendation then? So so from here on in, these are going to be my favourite six channels. Yes. Uh, <laughs> what are those channels and what which ones should I be looking at? Different bands to the race band. So you've got band band E number four, which is five six four five, band E number two, five six eight five, band F number two, which is five seven six oh, band A 
uh, number four, which is 5805, Bandy number six, which is 5905, and Bandy number eight, which is 5945. But what about, and is that the same if you want to run or fly with less pilots? Do you still like pick them out? Are there other particular ones that you should be using if you only have a couple of guys? So, if you know, for the best signal, is that um, if there's two of you flying, then just pick any two frequencies from those six. If there's three of you flying, pick any. Um, if there's four, then Basically, we recommend go with 5645, 5760, 5905, and 5945. If there's five of you, go 5645, 5685, 5760, 5905, and 5945. And then if there's six of you, just use the whole six bands. Fantastic. That's pretty easy then. So mm -hmm. so all I need to do is in my fat shark goggles, you can say favorite channels. And all I need to do then is make sure that those are the six. So, so the way it works then, just so I've got this right in my head, is because of the way these um, intermodulation frequencies work, is because of the equal spacing of race band, it actually works against you getting multiple pilots up. But the way the spacing of those means that all of those frequencies are not on where those IMDs from the other pilots would be, so you kind of you, you kind of dodge the bullet every time with all six frequencies. Is yeah. that right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the six frequencies have fundamental space in, but they've also taken into consideration space in for the IMD frequency as well. It will give you those six frequencies give you the best of both worlds. Fantastic. That is great to know. So hopefully that's been interesting for those of you that fly with your friends and maybe have been using race band and experienced these kind of things yourself and wondering what's been going on and what's happening. So now you know why it happens and how to get rid of it. So this slide that I'm putting up here now are the six frequencies that you should be trying to use when you're flying with friends and family or you're flying in a race and race organizers it's probably worthwhile thinking of these if you're going to be flying up to six pilots these are probably better to use than pure race band a quick insert here recorded after the video was shot with greg talking about what's legal here in the uk now those of you that are eagle-eyed will have noticed that there's an awful lot of band e in this particular slide. Now band D is one of those that's outside the legal range for FPV here in the UK. So one of the things that Greg has done is sat down and looked at what is legal in the UK. I'll put links in the description with the two references to the documents that explain what is legal if you're interested in looking at that and Greg has come up with this recommendation. So unfortunately because we don't have the full range available even though antennas are designed for that because it's a worldwide product in the UK we have a little bit less latitude. The first thing to think about is if you're going to be running with two pilots and then actually race band isn't a bad idea but the recommendation is use race band three and six to avoid the kind of problems that you see. If you want to fly three pilots in the UK then go for race band three, race band four and race band six and that should reduce the amount of IMD or a disruption that you get. And for four pilots which is the most at the moment that Greg's managed to figure out you can use race band three, race band four channels B6 and A1 should give you the best experience. I think what we actually need here is to maybe have a look at the legal range again, the separation and IMDs and come up with maybe a new band because what we're doing here is having to cherry pick some legacy stuff from the existing kind of standard 40 channels that are knocking around and that is meaning that we're having to run into these problems. There's an opportunity here I think in the modern hobby for us to come up with a brand new set of eight frequencies within the legal range that actually would work together and allow eight pilots to fly. So that's something that Greg and I will continue to work on and hopefully if we get somewhere with it, I'll make another video. So thank you again to Menace, thank you to Andy and thank you to Eric for actually doing all the hard work and figuring this out. And thank you particularly to Menace RC for helping me figuring this out and actually putting this demonstration together. Now during my visit to Greg and Menace RC, Greg has very kindly offered a giveaway for each one of these videos that we recorded in his lab. And that's for one of these antenna pack 5.8 gig polarized sets that has both the invader patch and antenna for your quad or plane and also an antenna for your goggles along with all of the connected bits and pieces. Now these normally retail for about 30 quid. And if you're interested in being in for a chance to win this one on this particular video, then do three things, like the video, 
pop a comment down below and make sure you're a subscriber to the Painless 360 channel. Also make sure that you've got the bell notification icon ticked so you don't miss any of the videos as they come out or announcements about prizes or winners too. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you like the video and like what I'm doing here, then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing, you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.